Hey, uh, so I had a student who had some questions about Calculus 2 and they were working on these workforce problems and I figured I might as well make a YouTube video just to kind of explain the concept that we were covering. There really isn't a lot of great resources out there for that. So um, the problem that we had was, let me type it out. This is the first time I'm using this uh, whiteboard thing too. It's free, it's online. So the problem is we have a cylindrical tank, I forgot it's cylindrical tank, with a radius equal to 1.5 meters and a height equal to 6 meters and a density of, um, I'm just going to use P, it should be rho, but I'm going to use density was equal to 920 kilograms per meter cubed. Um, that should be cubed. I guess I'll put it like that. Um, and a spigot of, I think it was like a spigot of one meter. Then the question was, what is the work needed to push the fluid out of the tank. Okay, so to get started on this problem, you gotta think about two really important laws. Number one is the force of gravity. This is really important, so the force of gravity is the force that keeps you and I both sitting in our chairs right now. There's a force being applied to the ground, and there's a force that's pushing us up. So we got a normal force that pushes us up, which you call Fn. And then we have the force of gravity that's pushing us down. That's called Mg. It's the mass times gravity. This is such an important law in physics. It's basically, I mean, 400 years ago, Newton came up with this very special number called G, which is the acceleration of gravity on this planet. And there's a lot of Basically, it's just it's a special number. And before that, people were thinking like ghosts were knocking off beers and stuff off the of tables. And Newton was sitting there. And he's like, no. It accelerates at a constant acceleration to the ground. And we know that G is a special constant, 9.8 meters per second squared. Okay, so that's super important. We need that. And then there's this other guy who about like 2000, he said that we could get the mass of an object if we knew its density and the volume of the object. So, for example, water. There's a way for you to calculate the amount of water in a pool if you have the density of water and the volume of water. So that was Archimedes, and he gave us this. The mass is, well, I'll write it like this. He gave us that the density is equal to the mass over volume. It's kind of an anecdote here. Um, there was a story that like someone came to Greece and tried to rip off a king, gave him a lead lead crown that was painted like gold. The crown, the king accepted it, and he was like, "Okay, I want someone to figure out how we can figure out if we have gold or we don't have, if it's like fake material." So, the challenge was to do this. And Archimedes sat in a bathtub, and he realized that when he sat in the bathtub, some water went out, and he realized that you could measure the water that was displaced by the object that you placed into the water to figure out the density, and the density. Is important because gold has different density than lead so it was a way for you to be able to test materials back then um, it's like ancient material science pretty cool all right so we can use this to actually get an equation for the uh, the mass so we can say that the mass is equal to cross multiply Rho times V that's really important so that means our formula can turn into the density times volume times gravity. Now, the other thing is, we wanna know how much work it takes to push the fluid out of the tank. This is super crucial in physics. Think about work. Work is the sound of my voice echoing through the speaker and vibrating the molecules, atoms in your ears, which you interpret as sound. Work is dragging a crate across the floor, hearing screeching, seeing scratching. It's the thermal energy that is released when you move an object or you apply a force for a given displacement. So pause the video here for a second and think about this. If I have a person who runs around a one meter track, 
and they do one complete loop around the track, what is their total displacement from where they started? It's zero. It's zero because displacement is a measurement of how far you went in your path. It's important because in physics, we want to measure things in their path. So if I lift it up, this, this pencil, if I lift up a pencil, I'm doing some work to lift up a pencil. If I stop here, right? So if I go from here to here, there's a positive network done by my, done by my uh, hand, and there's a negative work done by gravity. If I do it again, go up, go back down, well, now the positive work that I just did was undone by the negative work that I just did. And the positive work of gravity was undone by the negative work of gravity. So the total work was zero because I'm back where I started. So this has a formula. The work is equal to the, f the force times displacement. I, I guess I'll just leave it like this dx, f of x dx, if that's the case. Okay, so how does this relate to the problem that we're looking at? Well, first we wanna draw a picture. So it's a cylindrical tank with a radius of 1.5 meters, height of six meters, and a spigot of one meter. I wanna show you the way that this problem looked in the book. I didn't draw the problem this way. The, the book showed an example. This is probably one of the harder ways to do the problem. So it's, it's a tank like this, cylindrical, And it has a little spigot coming out of the top. And this is one meter. We got a radius. This is 1.5 meters. And then it goes back a height of six meters. Okay, so we want to get this problem started. Our formula to do this is going to be the work is equal to the force rho and it's going to be rho dv times g this is our work okay i want us to completely forget about the height so the way i'm going to write this problem is it's going to be the works equal to the integral of the area and the height is just going to be six meters times g. What does that represent? It represents the face of the area. So the there's like a fluid in here, which goes back a, a height. So we're eliminating that. We're just looking at the area, the front of the, the cross-sectional area of the cylinder times the height there. And to get the area, we got we to gotta somehow describe a function for the cross-sectional area. So I think a pretty good pick would be x squared plus y squared equals 1.5 meters squared. Right? That seems pretty good. So that tells us that x, and we're going up in the y direction. We're going up in the y direction. This is gonna be our y direction. And this is going to be our x direction. So we're going up in the y direction. So um, we should probably do x equals 1.5 meters squared minus y squared. I'm going to take a square root of that. So we got that part. The other thing is it's going up. We're going up in a like if we look at the y-axis here we're at negative from the center we're at negative 1.5 here and then we go up to 1.5 but then we keep on going up to uh, another we go up another meter so if this is the y-axis if we go up another meter we're going to end up with the you can think of the cross-sectional area. We got this x equals the square root of 1.5 squared minus the square root of y. And then we also have, um, we got to go up not just 1.5 meter, we got to go up 2.5 meters. So we're going to have 2.5 
minus y. And uh, now we know that, that our dy, our dy is going to go up um, from negative 1.5 to 1.5. So we can plug this all in and we get that the work is equal to rho times the integral of um, since we did the square root, the square root would only be half of our circle, so we need two times the square root of 1.5 meters squared minus y squared times 2.5 2.5 minus y. That's not squared times six. I'm going to move my g out here, times dy, and we're going to go from negative 1.5 to 1.5. Okay, at this point, you just need to plug in the radius right here, so 920 kilograms, 920 kilograms per meter cubed, gravity, and uh, you do the math, but this is all completely set up. I don't want to spend a lot of time on this, so work this out you know, for yourself if you get stuck, but I thought this was kind of a challenging problem. Um, and you know, if you like this, uh, I'll keep on making more videos. Cool.